year was 1967. The war in Vietnam was escalating. American troops and military equipment were pouring into Vietnam in ever-increasing numbers. But as the war dragged on, hopes for a non-communist victory grew dimmer. The battles became grimmer. The destruction continued. The conflict in Indochina coincided with a time of political transition in Southeast Asia. Indonesia, after a period of domestic turmoil, had just ended its campaign of confrontation against Malaysia and Singapore. The new leadership under President Suharto wanted to re-establish ties with its neighbours on a new footing. The attempted merger between Singapore and Malaysia had also failed, and Singapore found in 1965 that it had to stand on its own. The Philippines, keen on fostering better ties with Malaysia, was also soft-pedalling its claims over Sabah at that time. It was under such circumstances that the five countries of Southeast Asia decided to form an organization that would help promote regional cooperation. On the 8th of August, 1967, the foreign ministers of Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand and Singapore met in Bangkok to sign a declaration that marked the founding of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN. The main aims of ASEAN, as embodied in the Bangkok Declaration, were to accelerate economic, social, cultural development in the region and to promote regional peace and stability. And for a newly independent Singapore, membership to the organization was important. In the atmosphere of separation, Singapore welcomed a larger vehicle so that it could conduct relations with Malaysia and Indonesia. An organization of five partners meant there were two other partners that helped Singapore relate to Malaysia and Indonesia in a new situation. The early years of ASEAN, however, were relatively quiet. Cooperative efforts were largely confined to non-controversial matters. But slow as the progress was, the years from 1967 to 1975 were important to the five culturally diverse nations. They were not wasted years. These were years when ASEAN leaders learned to deal with each other. They learned more about the principles of conduct, behaviour, thinking. Events in the mid-1970s, however, were to provide the catalyst for greater ASEAN cooperation. In April 1975, the war in Vietnam ended. Saigon, which had held out for so many years against the communist onslaught, had finally fallen. Cambodia and Laos had also come under communist rule. But the fall of Indochina was not the only problem that ASEAN had to confront. The first oil crises in 1973 had brought about severe economic hardship, the effects of which were immediately felt by the ASEAN economies. Both these events encouraged the ASEAN leaders to work more closely with one another. In 1976, for the first time, the ASEAN heads of government met in Bali to reaffirm their commitment to greater regional cooperation, not only in economic, social and cultural activities, but also in political and security matters. The post-Bali summit era saw the launching of numerous joint endeavours. Some of these include the ASEAN industrial projects and the ASEAN Petroleum Sharing Scheme. Cooperative efforts in agriculture, food sharing and communication have also been undertaken. 
An ASEAN Secretariat was set up in Jakarta to help further such efforts. But it was in the political arena that ASEAN cooperation was most visibly shown. Vietnam's invasion and occupation of Cambodia in 1978 had caused an exodus of refugees into Thailand. The act of aggression was condemned by ASEAN. But the organization's demand for a Vietnamese withdrawal was at first greeted with some skepticism. You know, when we, the ASEAN countries wanted to introduce a resolution requesting the Vietnamese to withdraw, and condemned the Vietnamese aggression. And the Vietnamese perm reps told Tommy Ko, why are you wasting time? Nobody's going to listen to you. But the international community did listen. The result of the vote is as follows. In favor, 91. Against, 21. Abstentions, 29. The draft resolution is therefore adopted. The world has not forgotten... Since then, support for ASEAN's call for a Vietnamese withdrawal from Cambodia has grown significantly. In 1986, this resolution was passed by an overwhelming vote of 115 to 21. This success at the UN was a clear indication of the international recognition that ASEAN has attained. ASEAN's resilience and success has disproved initial predictions that the member states would not be able to rise above their differences and work towards a common goal. And ASEAN's membership grew with Brunei's entry into the organization in 1984. In many ways, the success of the organization can be attributed to the style that the leaders have adopted in their relations with each other. All of us treat each other as equal members. You know, no Nobody, big or small, has got a veto or has got the last say. And all decisions are taken by consensus. Where there are differences, we will settle them privately and quietly. We will not make them into public issues. Where we have common approaches and share common purposes, we will highlight them and make them public so that the populations will all see that they're working together. <laughs> This ability to work together has been extremely important in minimizing differences between the member states and has contributed to a deeper sense of regionalism. It has created a sense of ASEAN-ness which was never there. We were all different nations with different historical and other backgrounds. But over the last 21 years, there's now a definite feeling that we belong to one group and are part of this area of Southeast Asia. For Singapore, membership in ASEAN has proven to be useful and beneficial. ASEAN has provided us an umbrella of peace, cooperation and goodwill in this area. Now, under this umbrella, we've been able to effectively carry out our own economic and social development plans. Because the area as a whole has enjoyed peace, we have been able to maximize the result of our own effort. The ASEAN countries call for the total... While ASEAN's more significant achievements have been political in its first two decades, matters of economic cooperation have become increasingly vital. Of their right to self-determination. And this was seen at the 1987 Manila summit, where the ASEAN states recognized the need to work together in the face of rising calls for protectionism in the West and falling commodity prices. We need to work together to keep markets open, keep markets outside ASEAN open. We also need to work together to increase intra-ASEAN trade. And the last summit in Manila in December 1987 was an important uh, summit because it recognized the need, in spite of these difficulties, to keep our markets open. ASEAN states continue to work together in the coming years, 
each can look back with pride at the achievements of the organization. That the region has enjoyed peace and stability for the past two decades is an eloquent testimony to the value of ASEAN to Singapore and the other five member states.